Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now, throughout this whole season, we've taken you through all kinds of electrical components and some of their diagnosis. Well, it really all boils down to this, getting you out in the driveway so you can make some of these repairs. And it all starts with some strategy-based diagnosing. What's that? Well, it's simply looking for some good components to find bad components. To do that, well, I got an air condition board right here laid out for you. Only on Tech Garage, we can show you how it works and the voltages. Here's an air condition board. So I turn it on, I'm running through a switch. After I run through a switch, it's going to either come right directly to the blower motor or it's going to go through a resistor block right here. This is how it steps down the speeds and then it either goes through a high speed relay directly to the blower motor or it bypasses it all for some resistance. Sounds pretty complex, but take a look at this schematic right here. I'm going to pull up a graphic for you. Now, I know schematics used to be graphics, you know, years ago, all the spaghetti, no more. They just kind of isolate the component. When they isolate the component, you can see it right here. It started up at the fuse. There's that switch I was talking about. This is one whole switch up here. Up here is actually where you dial it on and off vent and then here's the speeds. This is important. We'll take a look at each one of these. Then I go over to my resistor block which we just saw earlier. Down below I have that high speed relay that bypasses or allows the electricity to flow down to the motor. We're going to deal with the purple wire going down to the motor and then we're going to look at the voltages on all the actual wires. This is really cool. So the first thing you want to do, let's just say for example your blower motor wasn't working. Well strategy based diagnosis. I come down to the ground and I come to the purple wire. That's the one we said was going down to the blower motor and we have zero volts. So we don't have any voltage to it. Obviously it's not going to run. If you had 12 volts, it would be a bad blower motor. Just a systematic. Now I can check the ground side by switching this over to the positive on the battery and coming up here to the ground. If I come to the ground, you can see that I'm producing 12 volts. That means that the ground side is good. Well, we're going to go back and go through each one of the speeds. Now, if it was working, let's go strictly to high first. So if I cut it on and I go to high, you can see there's 12 volts going down to the blower motor. That's a good thing. But let's pull up our schematic again. Maybe we have some intermittent problems or some speed problems. So if we go to that first wire, that's brown. Well, that brown wire on the top of that schematic is running through that resistor block, all of them. So I'm gonna put it on that and I'm gonna show you. If you look at the voltage now on the brown wire, we're only at about five volts. That's not a lot of voltage and that's why the motor's running slow. Now to go back to the graphic one more time, we'll just go down the line, the tan wire. The tan wire is the next wire. That's the next speed up. I go to that one, go across, you can see 8.7 volts. We're climbing and climbing and climbing. It's going a little bit faster. Back to the graphic one more time. The last one's the light blue down there. The light blue is only going through one of these resistor blocks. So if I fire it up, you can see there's 10 volts. Now when we bypass it totally, there's our 12 volts high. So it's just a matter of a systematic diagnostic approach. It's really simple. Step by step, work your way up. Go slow, pull that schematic. Rock Auto's got service manuals with all the schematics in it. Now, if you're dealing with a new car, last but not least, you're probably dealing with a computer and an actual pulse width modulation. Deal's a little bit different, but you still have all the same inputs, make the same checks, you'll be in good shape. Matter of fact, Tom has some of this on rockauto.com. We're gonna take a look at it. Well, cars have evolved and so has the AC systems. Tom, we went from resistor blocks to pulse width modulation. I mean, it may turn it on, 50%, you're feeling medium, 100% for high. It could pulse it, computers play a big factor. What if I go to rockauto.com? I'm gonna find everything. In the early 2000s, they moved from this, where you have the resistors generating all this heat. If the blower motor isn't going full speed, you're just generating heat and resistors. They went from that to the, the pulse width modulation, so it's just cycling on and off. Runs much cooler, much simpler. If you actually get under the dash of a car made in the last 10 years, you'll be surprised how much room there is there, because you've got the, the computers controlling things versus these elaborate electromechanical complex systems. Yeah, it's been a big difference. Now, we read a schematic over there. That's a big deal, too. I mean, you guys got some help there as well. Right, uh, in our bi-monthly newsletter article, we did a, a, a story about a car I was working on, my wife's car, and the, the fuel pump wasn't working, so I looked the, at the schematic, I said, okay, the inertia switch, the switch in the trunk that is supposed to disconnect the fuel pump if the car's in an accident, that's supposed to be right before the fuel pump, and I checked and the inertia switch had power. So I thought, oh, it must be the fuel pump. But then I took another look at the, at the uh, uh, wiring diagram, and, and I saw it was ca labeled Canada. That's something to watch for. The USA version of the vehicle, which was another part of the wiring diagram, 
actually had the inertia switch right after the ignition switch. And it turned out the fuel pump wasn't working because there was corrosion in the big connector that goes into the engine computer. We've been putting this in practice at the table. I say we pull in a real car with a real problem, come over and help me diagnose it. You're going to have to wait for next week for that. But don't go far away because there's plenty more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com right after this break.